everyone it is Kate back from the beach with some books that I bought while I was there and something I do pretty much every time I visit the beach is visit the used bookstores and it's so much fun hunting for books and finding some real gems and before I went to the beach though there were a couple I found used at the library and so I will show you those and these are from the Amelia Peabody series by Elizabeth Peters and I can't remember what numbers in the series they are but this first one is the ape who guards the balance and I know it's later on in the series, and this one just says it takes place in 1907. There's not much of a synopsis. And then this one is called The Falcon at the Portal, and it says it takes place when Amelia and her family have arrived in Egypt for the 1911 archaeological season, but trouble finds them when their young friend David is accused of selling ancient artifacts. While Amelia and company try to expose the real culprit the body of an American is found at the bottom of their excavation shaft, and a child of mysterious antecedents sparks a crisis that threatens to tear the family apart. Then I also misplaced somewhere along the way my copy of A Room with a View by E.M. Forster, and it's one of my absolute favorite books. It's the only E.M. Forster that I have read, so I definitely need to rectify that. Anyhow, I picked up this Barnes & Noble Classics edition, and I'm just really happy to have it back in my life and to own it, and it's just one of my favorites. Then I was looking around on Goodreads. Uh, Atonement is one of my absolute favorite books, so I was looking for books that are similar to Atonement. And this one, Possession, a Romance by A.S. Byatt, came up several times, and it is the winner of the 1990 Booker Prize for Fiction. And I'll read you guys the synopsis. It sounds really different than anything I read. So I love having a variety in reading, and I'm really looking forward to checking this out. It says that two young academics are researching into the lives of, respectively, the Browning-esque mid-Victorian poet Randolph Henry Ashe and his contemporary Christabel Lamott. As they delve deeper into the turbulent and hitherto unrelated lives of the two poets through their letters, journals, and poems, and trace their movements from London to the North Yorkshire coast, from spiritualist seances to the fairy-haunted west of Brittany, a bizarre and haunting counterpointing and correspondence of passions and ideas begins to emerge. An astonishingly rich and exhilarating blend of mystery, romance, comedy, Victoriana, and modern university novel, it reaches its climax on a storm-tossed night in the churchyard, where Ash and his secret are buried. So like I said, sounds very different than anything I read, and I just want to read more books with beautiful prose, and as you probably heard me rave about As I Lay Dying, those books I feel really stay with you a lot longer, so I just want to read more literary fiction in the future, literary fiction and classics. So then, in lieu of my resolution, I have several classics to show you, and these are from the used bookstores that I visited, and the first is Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. I consider Elizabeth Gaskell to be one of my very favorite authors, but I am really scared to read this, because compared to Cranford, North and South, and Wives and Daughters, this is supposed to be very different and a lot more sad. So it talks about Mary, Dar Mary Barton, the daughter of a disillusioned trade unionist, rejects her working-class lover, Jem Wilson, in the hope of marrying Henry Carson, the mill owner's son, and making a better life for herself and her father. But when Henry is shot down in the street and Jem becomes the main suspect, Mary finds herself painfully torn between the two men. Through Mary's dilemma and the moving portrayal of her father, the embittered and courageous activist John Barton powerfully dramatizes the class divisions of the hungry 40s as personal tragedy. So it sounds really intense, but I do consider her to be one of my favorite authors, and I think this is maybe her most noted work, uh, so I definitely want to read it. Then I also realize I want lots more American literature in my life, just how much I enjoyed William Faulkner's writing, and I already have plans to read more of him, and then I w want to get back to reading more Willa Cather because I've been so impressed by whatever I've read by her, and then I realized Ernest Hemingway is an author who I have not read that much of. A few years ago, I read all of his short stories and really enjoyed those, so then I wanted to read some of his novels, so I picked up uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls, and this takes place during the Spanish Civil War, which I know really nothing about, and it's about Robert Jordan, and he has three days to plan the destruction of a strategically important bridge. So I think there's going to be lots of strategy and kind of out of my realm of books that I normally read, but I'm okay with that. And I think maybe Hemingway, Faulkner, and John Steinbeck are authors who don't maybe attract as many women, but their writing is really incredible, so I shouldn't let that deter me and not try them out. 
Then I got uh, The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton, and I was really excited to get this Oxford World's Classics because I don't own any in that edition. I think they are maybe more common in the UK, and so I was just really excited when I saw this beautiful edition of it. And Stephanie from That's What She Read, uh, today we are starting a buddy read of this, and Edith Wharton is an author who I've kind of been intimidated by, but as part of my resolution of reading more, um, you know, American literature, I am really looking forward to trying out Edith Wharton. And this is about Lily Bart, a beautiful, poor, and, and she's unmarried at 29. In her search for a husband with money and position, she betrays her own heart and sows the seeds of the tragedy that finally overwhelms her. So I am looking forward to trying this out. Then I just talked about how much I love Atonement by Ian McEwen, and I really want to read some more by Ian McEwen. I know his other books have kind of mixed reviews, but I tried to pick the ones with the highest ratings on Goodreads, and so I got The Children Act, and this is about a leading high court judge who presides over cases in the family division. Um, so at the same time, she's called to try on an urgent case for religious regions reasons. Adam, a gentle 17-year-old boy, is refusing the medical treatment that could save his life, and his devout parents echo his wishes. Time is running out. Should the secular court overrule sincerely expressed faith? In the course of reaching a decision, Fiona visits Adam in the hospital, an encounter that stirs long-buried feelings in her and powerful new emotions in the boy. So his books, um, from the synopses of all the other ones and from what I experienced in Atonement seemed like a lot of characters internalizing things, and he just writes it so beautifully and eloquently. And so I'm just really, really looking forward to reading more of his books. And then the next one, which was the next highest rated one on highest rated one on Goodreads, was Saturday, and this just takes place over the course of a day. And it's Henry Perron, a neurosurgeon, urbane, privileged, deeply in love with his wife and grown-up children, plans to play a game of squash, visit his elderly mother, and cook dinner for his family. But after a minor traffic accident leads to an unsettling confrontation, he must set aside his plans and summon a strength greater than he knew he had in order to preserve the life that is dear to him. So I think I'll get to this one first, just because I just... I, I don't know. It just sounds really appealing to me and interesting. And then this one I have heard talked about a bit on BookTube, and that's on Chesil Beach. And this is just uh, really interesting. I think it's basically about the consummation of a relationship, a couple that has just gotten married and they are on the beach. And so I think he'll have a really interesting take on that. And just very interesting. I just really, I think Atonement is going to be one of the best books I've ever read, basically. And I want to read more by him. Then I kind of went a little bit crazy getting the Rosamund Pilcher. I have nine books here to show you, but her books, uh, the more major novels are still in print, but the smaller ones are not in print and they are actually really hard to find. And I found these in the used bookstore and I remembered seeing them like last year before I really liked her and I checked and like all of them were still there and I just love her stories so much. They're so cozy and it's not anything amazing, but they're just so much fun to read. And so I got nine of her books. And um, yes, I just, I'm very excited. Uh, and the first two actually I found at the library. So I had hunted through like a whole table of little mass market paperbacks. And then at the very end, I found two from her that are out of print now, which is very exciting. And the first is The Day After the Storm. And on the last day of her mother's life, Rebecca learns she has a family in Cornwall and sets out to find the grandfather and cousin she has never known. But only the enigmatic Joss Gardner, the outsider who seems to be the apple of her grandfather's eye, can help her understand the dark currents that lie behind her family's loving reception. Then uh, Sleeping Tiger. And I just, <laughs> this cover is quite garish, but that is okay because it's flowers, right? So, for the first time in her life, Selena Bruce wasn't sure what tomorrow would bring. She had impulsively left behind her lawyer fiancé in London and flown alone to a tiny island off the Spanish coast. She was searching for the father she'd never known, but what she found was an unexpected truth about herself and the man she planned to marry. For exotic San Antonio offered Selena more than the penetrating brilliance of the noonday sun. So good old fashioned romance. And then I bought a copy of The Shell Seekers. It's very, very reflective. I have read this one. I read this one this past September, but I didn't own a copy because I got it from the library. So I'm very happy to own a copy of this. And this is about a woman who 
towards, uh, she's middle-aged and has not really done anything that she wanted to do in her life. And then when she gets a big sum of money, she decides she's finally going to do what she wants to do. And it just is a really heartwarming story. I really enjoyed it. Then, um, I traded in my hardcover of Winter Solstice because I've just decided her books are so cozy. I only want paperbacks of them. So I got the um, paperback of this, and I'm planning on reading this in December with Katie of Life Between Words. And so I am really looking forward to reading it. It takes place during the winter solstice. All of these people that, where is it? Yes, they end up all staying in the house together and getting to know each other. I'm really looking forward to reading that at the appropriate time of year. Then another view. Uh, there were only two men in Emma's life. Her father, a remote artist who left her in boarding school and saw her every few years, and Christo, who had been her stepbrother for a few months and now wanted to get to know her. So then I got, this is so funny, it's a box set and it's called um, A Potpourri. So I'll just pull those books out. So there were four books in this, and this was normally... $16 and I got it for $8. So very exciting. Um, and the covers all look very similar, but if you like Rosamund Pilcher, you know, it's hard to get tired of her. Um, all Flora, Flora Waring had to do was play the part of Rose, her long lost twin for one weekend and meet the family of Rose's fiance. I love like how convoluted this one sounds. Um, but when Flora is introduced to the Armstrong family, she realizes that she has inherited the secret scandal Rose created five years before. The next one is called Wild Mountain Time, and this is about Oliver Dobbs. He was a writer first and a man second. To him, other people were tools, even though he had broken Victoria Bradshaw's heart once. When he arrived on her doorstep with a two-year-old son, she found she could not refuse him, and the three of them set out for a castle in Scotland. The End of Summer. After years in the United States, Jane returns to the tranquil Scottish estate Elvie, where she'd spent a magical childhood. Memories of Elvie had always summoned the image of Sinclair, the rakish man she had once dreamed of marrying. But now that she is home, she finds Sinclair a different man. And then finally, the empty house. And at 27, Virginia Keeley had been through the most intense experiences life had to offer. A magical first love ending in heartbreak, a suitable marriage, motherhood, and widowhood. All she wanted now was to take her daughter and son to a seaside cottage and help them recover. But Virginia's true love was there, waiting, hoping, and praying. So, I think those are ones I could sit and read in one session, and I'm just really happy to have more Rosamund Pilcher on my shelf. I hope you guys have enjoyed this, and I look forward to seeing you for my next video. Bye, guys.